Hello there, welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons. This is a BTEC Applied Science Unit 5 Chemistry and we're going to be looking at the stability of carbocations. So where does this fit then? Well it's down the bottom here but it ties in as well. It goes, it goes perfectly with the electrophilic addition which you'll find in other videos and I'll put links in the description as well and it also relates to this symmetric and asymmetric alkene so again I'll put a, a link in the description for that. So by the end of this video then we're going to be able to identify carbocations as primary, secondary or tertiary. We'll also look at what a carbocation is and then we're going to be able to explain the stability of them and the relative stability of primary, secondary and tertiary. First up though if you don't subscribe please do your support is very much appreciated. Please use the like and comment features and let me know what we think. So a couple of key terms then to start us off. What is a carbocation? Well, a carbocation, it's a carbon that has three bonds and a positive charge. So it's an intermediate. These things are not stable. OK, so carbon will have four bonds in all stable substances. This carbocation is an intermediate during a chemical reaction. An R group. So an R group is a chain of carbon atoms. The most simplest group would be a methyl group or an ethyl group, but they can be very long or very short, but it's a carbon chain. Primary, secondary or tertiary carbocation then? Well, a primary carbocation is where one of those three groups is an R group. So for example, we could have two hydrogens and a methyl on our carbocation. That would be classed as a primary carbocation. A secondary carbocation is where two of those three groups are in fact R groups. So we could have two methyls, we could have a, an ethyl and a methyl, but there's two R groups on this carbocation. I'm going to put an ethyl and a methyl and the other one is a hydrogen. That would be a secondary carbocation. You might have guessed it, but a tertiary carbocation is when all three groups are in fact R groups. Again, they could all be the same, they could be different. I'm going to put three methyl groups and this would be a tertiary carbocation intermediate. Couple of key facts then. An R group is actually known as an electron pushing groups. So R groups are electron pushing. This means that the tertiary carbocations are the most stable because think about it, if you've got three electron pushing R groups, what that's doing is it's actually stabilizing this positive charge because this carbocation is, as I've said, unstable. So if you've got three R groups, that makes it more stable. So a tertiary is more stable than a secondary. And using the exact same logic then, a secondary is more stable than a primary because it has two electron pushing groups instead of just one. It's the relative stability of these carbocations that can give rise to a mixture of products, a major and a minor product. So in electrophilic addition reactions of alkenes, there's always going to be two possible carbocations. We will look at some specific electrophilic addition reactions in the next few videos. But what I'm saying here is that an alkene is a carbon-carbon double bond and during that chemical reaction, you get the possibility of two different carbocations. So during the reaction, the carbocation could be on the left or the carbocation could form on the carbon on the right. So we've got two possible carbocations. Now, if the alkene is symmetrical, then those two carbocations are identical and you only get one product. However, if the alkene is asymmetrical, then those two carbocations will be different and that leads to two possible products one of them being the majority or the major product and the other one would be the minor product. Now if you're not happy with these terms symmetrical and asymmetrical there is a video that I've done on symmetrical and asymmetrical alkenes and I will put a link in the description. So just to show you what I mean here is let me come up with a symmetrical alkene. So that's a symmetrical alkene there that's butuene. Now I'll use an example here of HCl. So when HCl, I won't do the full mechanism, I'll leave that for the next video, but there's two possible products here. We could have the Cl here 
and the H would be on this one on the left hand side or the other product could possibly be the other way around where we have the CL here and the H on this carbon. Now they're actually both the same thing. If you were to name those two molecules they have the exact same name 2-chlorobutane. So a symmetrical alkene will always give rise to one product. There's no such thing as a major and a minor product here. It's a very different story, however, with an asymmetrical alkene. So I'm going to draw an asymmetrical alkene. In this case, I've drawn but1ene. And this time, if I react it with HCl, I'm going to get two possible products. I'm either going to get 2-chlorobutane or I'm going to get 1-chlorobutane. Now, one of these will be known as a major product and one will be known as the minor product. The easiest way or the best way for me to show this would be to actually do the mechanism. Now, the mechanism is going to be explained in more detail in the next video, but I'm going to go through it quickly here. So the first step, the pi bond attacks the electrophile. That's my first step. And this is where we've got two possible structures here is the hydrogen could either be bonded to this carbon or this carbon. Now, if the hydrogen bonds to the carbon on the left, then the carbon on the right is going to end up as the carbocation. So this would be a carbocation. If the hydrogen bonds to the carbon on the right, the carbocation is going to be on the first carbon. So I've got two possible carbocation intermediates. I'll explain this mechanism in more detail in the next video, but I've got two possible carbocations here. The one on the right, if I look at this one first, this carbocation has two R groups. So this is a secondary carbocation. The one on the right hand side, the carbocation only has one R group. So this is a primary carbocation. Now, a secondary carbocation is more stable because it's got two electron pushing R groups. That means that the major product is going to be the one formed from the secondary carbocation. And the minor product would be formed from the primary carbocation. Just to finish off the mechanism for you, that's the final step there. And on the left hand side, this time that lone pair of electrons goes to that one. So you can see the one chlorobutane and the two chlorobutane. We've got a major product and a minor product, and we identify using the carbocation intermediates. The focus of this video then was just to highlight the idea of carbocations and their stability and how that links to the major and minor product. The next few videos in the playlist, you're going to see the specific reactions and I'll specifically talk about major and minor products there too. Thanks for watching.